Well, New York is mourning the loss of Mayor David Dinkins, the first and only African American to hold that position to date. Yeah, joining us this morning is political strategist Basil Smichael. So good morning to you, Basil. Thanks for joining us. I know you, I know you knew Mayor Dinkins well in a very interesting way because not only was your, he your teacher, but then he was your boss. Hey, I actually, yeah, when I was a student at Columbia um, getting my master's in public policy, it was his first year teaching in the program after his uh, after his loss uh, for re-election. So I worked in his office. Uh, I was a, a bit of a teaching assistant to him um, that, you know, that first term. And so uh, not only did I have the pleasure of uh, meeting him prior to that, but just being in that office, I got to hear all, all kinds of stories and meet so many people that came through his office, which was not just about education, but it was about history, you know, people mm. coming to to see him and speak to him. And I got to learn about all the folks that intersected uh, his life and the life of New York City, which was amazing. Right. Yeah, you talk about history and there's, there's a lot of it with uh, Mayor Dinkins. I wanna talk about your personal relationship. Dan uh, tried to allude to it just a moment ago, but we spoke with Reverend Al Sharpton earlier who talked to us about how Mayor Dinkins sat with him and really showed him what he could be. But he's also been known to say that Reverend Al Sharpton, that Mayor Dinkins is just almost too nice to be mayor of New York City. Talk to us about your relationship with him and what kind of a man he was. You know, I, I have to say, uh, you know, I go around telling people he was sort of my adopted godfather. The truth is that most people can say that. Um, because, and if you ever heard him talk, he would always call you his buddy. You know, he always brought you in. He was a he was a person that would sort of welcome you with the with really open arms. And I think one of the things that I hope comes out of, of everyone's stories about him um, uh, today and in, in subsequent days is how much he really loved children. Mm. He always he would always pull out pictures of his of his grandkids of children that he met. When we go back to think about his policies, we you know they were beacon school programs that made sure that schools stayed open so that young people had a place to to get enrichment programs or other after school programs. He really really loved children, and I think that warmth. That uh, that 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 honesty, that willingness to sort of train the next generation, uh, including me, um, was was evident in all that he did. Yeah, I mean, think about what he came in on. Right. He came in as an able caretaker was how he was described this morning, came in on the wings of racial harmony at a time when the city really needed someone to lead by example and to bring calm and to bring peace. You know, we often talk to you as a political strategist. I wonder, even though he was a one term mayor, how he really changed the course for future generations. I know that Mayor Bloomberg would sometimes call him for advice. Yeah, you know, it's interesting because he doesn't get the credit for starting the reduction in crime that his, 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 uh, uh, the person that succeeded him does in Rudy Giuliani, but it actually started under David Dinkins, and mm -hmm. nobody really talks about that. Um, and, and the truth of the matter is he talked incessantly throughout his campaign about this gorgeous mosaic. And what yeah. that suggested to so many of us was that, you know, we are we are the diverse city that we've always been and will continue to be certainly now. Um, and we need to find a way to come together. And that I mean, that is <laughs> that's the message of unity that you hear being struck in so many campaigns subsequent to that. And just two very quick things. One of the things we don't hear um, as a result uh, often uh, is that, you. you know, when Jesse when, when Jesse Jackson ran in 1988, you know, and won New York, it was it gave Dinkins the the sort of sense that, you know what, an African-American can win here in this city. Mm -hmm. um, and he does talk about that mosaic. He had one of the most diverse administrations of his time. I want to talk a little bit about his wife, though, Joyce Burrow. She uh, was a, a classmate there at Howard University with him. Um, did you see her much in the office? I know they had a very strong relationship and unfortunately she died not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I got to meet her quite a few times and just just an amazing person, just a, 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 an absolute rock in the household, in the administration. Um, and she, I would tell you, again, th just as a family, some of the, they were the people that would give you the shirt off their back. Mm. I mean, if they could make connections for you, if they could support you, um, if they could mentor you, I mean, just the absolute willingness to do that and people that, you know, they're, they're one of a kind folks um, yeah. and alike we will not see for some time.
You know, it, you referenced what he started to do. You know, my family is from New York City, and my, my, I remember my parents and my grandparents would always say he was the one who started this revolution and revitalization of Times Square. And what was going on in sp certain areas of the city in nor uh, housing developments, but specifically Times Square as well. But he didn't get the credit for that, like you said. Um, if you just had to talk about his legacy in one sentence, what would it be? You know, I would actually say Nelson Mandela, and I'll tell you why. He comes, you know, when Mandela comes out of prison, the entire country, the world is focused on South Africa and trying to affect change and ending apartheid. And what happens? Mandela comes out of prison and he comes right to New York. And David Dinkins is right there. I mean, that the pictures of those two together, uh, I, I think, are forever etched in my memory, not wow. just not just for Mayor Dinkins, but for what Mayor Dinkins meant to New York, particularly in that moment in time. Absolutely. And in a way to the world as well, because it showed That's a, a global reach. And then, you know, we've heard Reverend Al Sharpton speak earlier today that Mayor Dinkins ran on some of the same messages that Barack Obama did following, in, in a way, in his footsteps. Thank you so much, Basil, right. for joining us today. We appreciate it. No problem. Really good Happy to hear Happy Thanksgiving to you.